Good morning. Definitely a beautiful morning, isn't it? I think we're going to start out just pretty much where we were last, we started out last time together, talking about prayer. We had just closed on the Word of God, what it means to us. Um, and as we begin, once this morning, we're going to start again with exactly the same question that we had, the same statement. It says, prayer is one of the greatest Christian privileges. What an awesome thing when you think about that. You know, we, we, we talk to the God of the universe. We talk to our Savior. We talk to our soon coming King. We talk to a God that can do literally anything. Amen. I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for that. And as we open in prayer, um, it's just a beautiful Lord's Day. And I too wish everyone a happy Father's Day. Uh, I was blessed. I had two children. I have six grandchildren. And I talked with my namesake, little Hal, yesterday, and I loved it. I, that, that FaceTime, I don't use it, but I did yesterday. Linda was there. I said, hey, look at this. And I just, I thank the Lord for the way that he's blessed us. I, I do. I, I thank the Lord for uh, being in America. I thank the Lord for life itself. I thank the Lord that I can say this morning that I'm a father and I'm very proud of it. Uh, I wish I would have gotten saved 20 years earlier. So, Mike, Rachel, God bless you folks. I did, it's, oh, I, I love it, I love it. That's the first thing Linda and I said, we, we met when we were young. And if I had a do-over, we would be meeting at the altar. And I don't mean just to be wed. Uh, we would have gotten saved years, years before we did. And I, I thank the Lord for his mercy, for his grace, for his long suffering. So with that in mind, we're gonna open our time in prayer and we'll do just that. We'll begin to see what the Lord tells us about prayer and the hindrances of prayer that we can have in our lives, our personal uh, prayer life. I hope that each one of us has a prayer life the same as we would get up in the morning for breakfast. Yep. Sounds silly, but I'm a pretty base person and I wanna be just that close with my savior. Adam and Eve met in the morning in the cool of the day, and until sin entered in, there was close fellowship. So that's a good reminder for you and I as we begin our class today. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to your house of prayer. And Lord, just be with you, be with the brethren. What a, what a beautiful day you've given us. We ask now that you would be with each teacher, Lord, that you would anoint each heart afresh, each student, I too pray for Pastor Bob and Diane. I just ask that you would uh, protect them, keep them safe, bring them back to us, Lord, refreshed. Thank you that we can come to a church where the gospel is taught, where the gospel is preached, where souls are being saved. Thank you for that, Lord. And now we ask that you would be with each individual, Lord, here this morning, just as Adolf has said, we've come in with our cup turned up. Lord, we want you to to fill it to overflowing. We want to be drinking from the saucer when we leave here today because you have blessed us. Thank you in Christ's name, amen. What will hinder our prayers from being answered? Where's Adolf? Remember the scripture you gave? See, yes, if we regard sin in our lives and iniquity, it, he will turn his face from us. So let's turn once again to Isaiah. Let's go to uh, chapter 57 this morning instead of 59. We'll, we'll stop right there for a minute. Isaiah chapter 59. No, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, Isaiah 57. Um, what will hinder our prayers from being answered? Isaiah 
chapter 57. I'm going to begin in verse 15. Isaiah 57, 15. And I hope, like I already have shared, but I hope that each one of us have a personal prayer time to meet with the Lord that, that, so that we can truthfully say, I know I'm a child of God. I know my Savior lives. I know my Savior is coming again, and I'm ready. And if we aren't, it's as simple as claiming 1 John 1, 9, Lord, you forgive me. You know, he tells us to confess our sins, for he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not with a ho-hum attitude, but truly with that uh, contrite spirit, that broken heart that says, Lord, I'm sorry, I've sinned. And when you and I, as his children, sin, we break the heart of Almighty God. So uh, let's begin in Isaiah 57, verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Pretty obvious who we're talking to right here and who's talking to us, isn't it? Isn't it neat as you just, uh, I hope from time to time that, uh, and, and we live in a world that everyone's in a hurry, you know? Uh, I tease Linda, I have to be careful in the kitchen. We have, we have a small house with an island in the middle. If she's coming one way, I'd better be going the other because man, she got, she bounces off the wall. You know, I her, don't hurt me. Don't you don't 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 run over me because now I'm, I'm slowed down quite a bit. You know, but in life itself, the world, and you know who the god of this world is. See, Satan. He has blinded the minds of those that believe not. He's the god of this world. He's the one that wants to keep us in a hurry all the time. Yep. And uh, as as we just take our time. I hope some, from time to time throughout the week that you just stop and as we, you begin to think about who this is, what about the psalmist when, when he says, be still and know that I am God? You know, just, just take that time and just remember of who we are in Christ Jesus, who we are, who we're serving, why we're here today, you know, as basic as basic can be. But isn't that just how our Savior is? The simplicity of Christ. Pastor Bob has taught on that, you know, and preached on that. The simplicity of you and I as children of God as we accept Him. Simply our Heavenly Father. That's who we've come to learn about in the worship this morning. Uh, once again, Isaiah 57, 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy places. I had to stop there this morning, you know, as I was just kind of refreshing, going over what we'd be sharing today. And I said, thank you, Lord, that as a child of God, we have already studied that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I thought, I'm there with you this morning, Lord. I'm there, you tell me. Uh, I forget the address. It's Galatians or Ephesians where we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We went through that. I apologize for not uh, being able to, to quote the scripture. Oh, I could find it, you know. I hope each one of you remember when we shared that as we talked about being seated in heavenly places. Yes, it's by faith, but it's the same faith that saved us. It's the same faith that we walk in as a child of God. See, it's the same faith that he wants us to grow in that grace, in that faith, believing him, trusting him, maturing in Christ Jesus. This, is, this has been quite a verse for me this week. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. Amen. How often, how often you and I as Christians, as we let our light shine, and I'm going to use our families, because we'll be, uh, most of us will be with some of our family today, but even with friends and stuff. But when you begin to let your light shine, and someone's having a, I'm going to just use very basic terminology, a bad day having a bad day, things aren't going right, and you begin to, to remember what Isaiah, what the Lord teaches us through Isaiah right here. Someone that has a, a contrite spirit, they're upset, you know, and they're humble towards the things of God, and their heart is tender. 
you and I may have an opportunity to meet someone like that just today. You know, we never, we never know what our friends and our neighbors are going through, what our loved ones are going through. You know, I just got a call yesterday, broke my heart. When I read this, I think, oh, if they were a Christian and they were reading the word of God and they would begin in Isaiah 57, 15, quietly, humbly, sincerely saying, Lord, I know that you're with me because my heart is sincere. I mean business this morning. I mean business with you. This isn't, I don't come here to play church. You know, we, I've come here to, to learn from him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And now that, that's what I want each one of us this morning, this Father's Day uh, Sunday to be doing. Literally, why am I here? I've come to worship my Savior in spirit and in truth. I've come to hear about him. I've come to read his word. We've read where it's settled in heaven. It will not change. Remember how uh, great our God is? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He does not change. Thank God for that. When you have a bad day or your friends have a bad day, pray begin to share this scripture with them. I'll have you a little Bible study, if at all possible. Let me tell you what the Lord says. See, that's all we're basically doing here this morning, just looking at God's word and saying, listen, this is what God says. He says, I am God. Oh. And he says, I dwell with those of a contrite spirit, a humble contrite spirit. And that's what we want this morning. Verse 16. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit shall fail before me, and the souls which I have made, and which the souls I, which I have made, and I have written here, we're not, this isn't part of the lesson, but yet it is, because I have the breath of life written right there. And this, this is for me, when we think of the souls of men and how God deals with us. Verse 17. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth and smote him. I hid me and was wroth, and he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. Rebellion, rejection, the, the carnal nature was at work. Verse 18, I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him always and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, Peace to him that is afar off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Thank the Lord. Listen to verses 20 and 21. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waves cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. The illustration that came right there to me with this wave stirring up the muck and the mire of life itself. If you've been around a, a pond or a lake, I used to go to Lake Erie quite often with my friend and I when uh, we were younger to fish, and you could see the mud line. You know, if there was a storm especially, you could look out a few yards, maybe half a mile or so, and you could see where the, the, the lake had been stirred up in the mud line. You know, we know what's taking place is if we take this to heart, as God says right here, the, the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters are cast has cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, said my God, to the wicked. Thank God you and I can take that and turn that around through Christ Jesus and say, thank you, Lord, for that comfort. Thank you for that peace. How often, how often have you through the years had someone tell you, I need the peace of God. It, it, it hasn't been a month since someone almost verbatim used that, that direct uh, answer when I asked them, how, how was it going? I, I, I need peace. I need comfort. See, isn't it nice when we read his word? He says, I'm the one that gives that to you. See, not the world, not the pill bottle, not the doctor. 
See, King Jesus right here. He says, you, you read my word. That's why it's so important that uh, Brother Bob, our other Sunday school teacher, and our pastor Bob, we share practically, well, try to every Sunday. Read your Bible. Are you reading your Bible? You know, someone just the other day, I saw him with a schedule, and he said, oh, I, I didn't know that. And uh, Danny, uh, or uh, Turner, Bill Turner, had given this individual a schedule, you know, are you reading your Bible? You know, are you on a schedule? Uh, that's a hard thing to do. It's hard to discipline yourself uh, to read every day because we're real people, you know. Sometimes we get up and we don't feel good. Or, uh, now I, I don't work anymore, so I don't have any excuse, you know. I don't. Uh, people say, well, I, I have to do this, I have to do that. The Lord understands that. I will guarantee you, and I'm telling you from experience, you be willing to say, well, gosh, I'm kind of tired. Oh, this morning, here, I'll, let's, let's bring it right up to date. This morning, a little after four, I didn't want to get up. And I thought, man, I need to get up. Read the Bible, have prayer, and prepare for today. Oh, I've been preparing for a week, month, I don't know ever how many days there are in the past year that I can remember that I've been preparing, you know, uh, I know that we can do it. I can't in and of myself, but if I'm willing, the Lord will stir our hearts. And I'm so glad I did. I'm not sharing this to puff up Harold because Harold isn't worth two cents. But my Savior is worth everything. And I mean that. The more you and I discipline ourselves to get up in the morning and meet with him and say, Lord, this is the day you've made for me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. One more verse. Uh, let's go on to chapter 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, their transgression, singular, and the house of Jacob their sins. Thank the Lord. Now let's go to the verse we used last week in Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, and I thought of Brother Adolph off and on all week as he shared that because that kind of tickles me when I hear someone quote a scripture. You know, that's just like when we when we give a, an address and, and we start looking for that verse it, it, and pastor says, oh, it's so nice to hear those pages. It's nice to hear someone say, when I begin to say, hey, what, what happens? What, what will, will hinder our prayer? I thought of Adolph all week, see? My iniquities and my sin hinders prayer. And that's, the, that's our study again for this week. What hinders our prayers? What comes between you and I and our Savior hearing, our God hearing, our request? See? Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. See, isn't that something? I heard Pastor Bob uh, testify within the last month or so about he was praying about something and it just he just didn't seem to get an answer. And he says, man, there, there must be something in my life. You know what I mean? We, we begin to take a self-analysis. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because this is what the Lord wants us to do. Remember in the psalmist, he says, uh, Lord, search me. See if there's any wicked way in me. You know, see, if, see what's in my heart. See what's in my life that shouldn't be there. If you and I with sincerity search, ask, seek, knock, he's right there. He's right there. I hope that we, we started a uh, few months ago, not years, but months ago, with Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, knock, continue to ask, continue to seek, continue to knock. He's right there for us, you know, in sincerity. Say, Lord, I need direction. I need, I need direction from you, not the world. The world will pat you on the back and say, oh, it's okay, buddy. No, it isn't okay. Or it isn't okay when Harold has sin in his life. When I let things go and say, well, it doesn't really matter. Everybody's doing it. I'm not going to give an account for everybody when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I'm going to give an account of what I say, what I have done, what I do knowingly. 
knowingly. Remember the word iniquity. We've been studying iniquity for weeks and weeks now, often on the pastor and, and Brother Bob, our other Sunday school teacher, and, and I, I shared with Ray Dombeck. He preached here, the art, uh, the chalk artist, you know? Iniquity, iniquity. Planning to sin. Sin when you know you're sinning. Sin when you say, well, it's okay. I'll just add, I'll just claim 1 John 1, 9. Do you think so? You think God don't know our heart? You think God don't already know and you plan to sin and say, well, it'll be okay. I used to have friends, Catholic friends. They was talking about, they would go live like the old scratch, maybe uh, Friday night. And they'll go to confession and, and go on their way and they're okay. They plan to do it. That's the biggest sin of iniquity that kept coming back to me. As I said, Lord, give me, give me understanding so that I, so that I understand what iniquity is in my life so that I can share with my brothers and sisters that when things come up and you have choices to make, what's the godly thing to do? You, you don't have to even ask most of the time, you know, what does, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 say? Is that the one that tells us to abstain from even the appearance of evil? Isn't that what 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says? I believe it is. I, I might have the, the address uh, wrong. But remember something. When you and I know that it's sin, stay away from it. And the Lord can help us do just that. You lean on the flesh will yield to the temptation. We walk in the Spirit, which means we're controlled by the Holy Ghost. We're controlled as the Spirit of God is within us, wanting to, to serve Him, humble ourselves. We will do the godly thing. Uh, and my, my answer to that, if anyone was, was talking to me and wanting me to give an answer, I always come back and right from, the, from Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned, and they hid from the Lord. They were guilty because of that sin. Our God came to them and said, where were you? Well, we heard your voice as every other day, walking in the garden. We heard your voice and, and we were frightened. We hid ourselves. Why'd you hide, Adam? Because I was naked. Who told you you was naked, Adam? You see what I'm saying? You can't fool God. He knows. He knows the very intent of our heart. He knows the thought. He knows. So with a contrite spirit, humility, sincerity, as you and I come as children of God, just that simple, Lord, I come, humble myself, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've sinned. I'm sorry that I broke your heart. I'm sorry that it was because of my sins. You had to go to that old rugged cross and that hill called Calvary. See, as you and I begin to personalize that individually, not for the whole world, for Harold. Okay? He saved me. He died for me. And I'm a child of his. Billy, I want us to be so close to the Lord Amen. that today would be a special, special day for each one of us because this is the Lord's day. We're in his house. We're learning from him. I want to share something from verse 15 here. Just a couple things before we go on. I'm trying to look at the clock and I have a watch. Uh. <laughs> I was going to say I can't see it, but I can see it. I, I can see it. I don't think I've worn this watch since I was at work at the shop. I don't think so. It was, I found it in the drawer. She's still ticking. Timex. <laughs> I wanted to tell my sick joke, and my wife said, no, that isn't funny. R-O-L-E-X? Oh, oh, not Rolex. T-I-M-E-X. It's a Timex, not a Rolex. You know? And I thought that was funny. I, th I, told, Lynn, I, said, I told myself a joke. She says, that isn't funny. You know? I, I said, I thought it was because I can't afford a Rolex. I, I got a $10 Timex. <laughs> oh, God, he's good. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, Isaiah 57, 15. I want to share a couple words here. Uh, for thus shall the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him or them, him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Uh, contrite. I thought I had the, the meaning written down here. Maybe I don't. Contrite. A meek or humble attitude. 
a contrite person also shows genuine grief and sorrow over their sin. You see what we're saying when we're talking with someone that has a contrite spirit? They're serious. They're serious. Their heart hurts because they realize they've sinned and broken the heart of Almighty God, who is a holy God. God is holy. God is holy. Don't think for a minute that sin is going to enter into his presence. God is so holy. The eyes of our almighty God is so holy that he could not look at his son on the cross from noon until three. I only use that because it speaks of from the sixth to the ninth hour, it was dark. Our heavenly father turned away because at that time, Jesus had become sin. My sin, your sin. Please understand what our savior did. Let it break your heart. Let it break your heart. Every time I read Isaiah 51, 52, and 53, I say, Lord, give me understanding. Touch my heart. Let me be there in my heart of hearts. Let me understand what you did for me. Let me understand that you took that beating for me. That was for me, those stripes. See? On and on we go. If we humble ourselves, contrite spirit, humble and broken heart. I'd like to share something here on that word contrite. Um, a person also shows genuine grief or sorrow over their sin. Let's turn to second. Keep your place here because we're coming back. We're, we're coming back here. Let's turn to second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter seven. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Are you there? 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm going to read the, the um, meaning of contrite. A meek or humble attitude. A contrite person also shows genuine grief or sorrow over their sin. That's just like shedding a tear over a lost soul. I used to hear that and say, well, okay, I want people to get saved. But when the Lord, when you mean business with the Lord, and I start praying for Enoch, my brother, that's my brother. I can shed a tear. And as you and I are serious and we're, this isn't the section on soul winning, but we're, Lord willing, we'll be there before long. Soul winning of how you and I, as we share the gospel, as we begin to pray, shedding tears for the lost. There are people today dying and going to hell. I had a man ask me the other day. D-Day. Showed Normandy. It was on the, the news and on the, they had different uh, common commentaries and things and different throughout uh, that week on the battle at Normandy when the men landed that island on that, that beach. He said, uh, wonder how many of those boys were saved. And the individual that said that to me sort of caught me off guard because I, 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 uh, it surprised me. I feel that the man's a Christian, you know. Uh, but when he said that to me, how many of those boys do you suppose were saved? 18, 19, 20 year old fellows, you know. They're men, they're young men, you know. And I thought, I said, well, I said, I don't know. I said, I remember uh, my older brothers, I'm the youngest of nine, and they would talk about when they were in the service, each man was given a New Testament, you know. And I said, well, I know the boys had to, New Testament in their lapel paw in their pocket. And the discussion went on, but we, we have to remember one thing. God is God. That's God's business. That, that, that's the only answer I ended up with. We live in a, in a godly country, used to be godly country. We live in a Christian station, uh, country, but it's so important that now our country is almost godless, you know, compared to what it used to be. 
you and I, it's absolutely imperative as we see the end approaching. Let your light shine. Let everybody you know, know that you're a Christian. Let everybody that you know, know why you're a Christian. Let everybody that you know, when someone asks you that question, that's like opening a, a sliding glass door. Go for it. Share the good news. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. It will work. God will give you an opportunity and he will give you the words to say. That's why it's so important. See, that's why we, we, we practice with the Romans road. That's what we use. That's God's word. See, as we begin in Romans 3.23, how many people have sinned? Everybody. All. All. See, and that's, that's the first step as you begin to go. I will guarantee you, when you mean business with the Lord, he will supply whatever is needed. Amen. You be prepared. You be prepared with the, with the Romans road or, or, or something to share with your friends and neighbors because if you're serious, you will have an opportunity to share. If you're serious, if you say, Lord, I mean business. I want to let my light shine for you. I want to see someone get saved. Wouldn't it be neat if you and I together would make a little pact to say this year, I want to continue to share with the gospel with someone until they get saved, until they get uh, have accepted the Lord. Wouldn't that be neat? We'd be doubled in size. See? Eh? Now I forgot where I was. Second, no, I didn't. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse ten. We're talking about uh, the Lord, the Lord answering a contrite person, someone that's genuinely sorry for their sin. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse ten says, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of." Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Right here, that contrite spirit, broken heart, in sincerity, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I accepted Jesus Christ January 13th, 1982. And I, he changed my life. Amen. See, I can share that with my brother because he knows me. I'm his little brother. I'm 75, you know? And he's 87. I said, oh, Enoch, you know God's real. Yeah, yeah, I know he is. Don't you want to get saved? No, not today. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I remember when I shared that with my brother Tim. Phew, we were in church. Took his glasses off. Yeah. Phew, to the altar we went. One of the greatest days in my life. Amen. That's all I did. I said, hey, Timmy, don't you want to get saved? Yeah. You like a little boy? He was my big brother, too. Just, yeah. That's what it takes. Sincerity. Don't you want to see your loved ones get saved? You know? For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. And that's where I went off on left field there on you. Because I am not sorry one day from January 13th, 1982 until June 16th. 2024. Amen. Not one regret. Linda and I always say, wish we'd have got saved sooner, Harold. Linda got saved nine years before I did. Yeah. Look at that word, but. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. You know why? I'm sorry I got caught. Not sorry for their sins, not a godly sorrow, not as godly sorrow. I was driving 85 in the 35 mile an hour. Why did that creep stop me? Yeah. You know, what about the, the, the man in hell? When he says, I ah, send that old bum uh, Lazarus over there and, and get me some water, just a drop of water to tip on my tongue. He wasn't sorry that he was in hell. He wasn't sorry that he was going to have that poor old beggar come down there in, in hell to give him a drink. See? He says nothing about that. He does mention his brothers later on. I was glad to hear that. You know, but don't let my brothers come down here. But there was not a godly sorrow. There was no repentance there. See? But the sorrow of the world worketh death. <clears throat> Sorry I got caught. And that, that's the only answer that I can come up with at that. Sorry I got caught, Lord. I'm not sorry I sinned. I'm sorry you caught me. Wow. Wow, wow. Okay, okay, let's continue on here. 
Okay. Let's turn to Proverbs 28. And again, we're dealing with, with sin and the hindrance, hindrances of sin, of our prayer, you know, how sin hinders our prayer life. Proverbs 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Are we there? Yes, I'm not. <laughs> I used, when my children were little, I used to tell them, I said, hey, did you take this out of my Bible? Did you get that verse out of there? Psalm 28. Psalm 28. Proverbs. Proverbs 28. Thank you. I heard that. I needed that. Thanks. I was reading one thing and saying something else here. Proverbs 28, verse 9. That doesn't make sense. Oh, no wonder. I'm in Psalm. I told you I needed a little help here this morning. <laughs> uh, now I found it. Proverbs 28, verse 9 says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Whoa. You see what I'm saying? Remember we've gone through the Ten Commandments and our Lord came and he says, I didn't come to do away with the law. I come to fulfill the law and he fulfilled the law. Now as a child of God, we can say right here, when we break God's commandments, not just the Ten Commandments, but something that he wishes for us to do, we have broken the commandment of the Lord. And he says right here, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law or hearing the truth or hearing about Jesus and rejecting him, even his prayer shall be abomination. So you talk about a hindrance to prayer when we begin to think of purposely breaking the laws and the commandments of our Savior, breaking the heart of Almighty God. Well, God knows I'm doing this, but I remember one time a lady, I can't look at my wife because I'm afraid I'll come up with the name. I don't want to say it. Uh -oh. She said to Linda and I one time, we were sharing the gospel and then something was going on and just shouldn't have been going on. And she says, I'm just like my dad. She just all puffed up like a big bandy rooster. And I thought, oh, listen to what she's saying. Listen to what she's saying. Oh, I, I, I'm okay. I, I, I can't help it. I'm just like my dad. Well, you know what dad, Linda and I thought about. She's the same answer that Jesus gave, the scribes and the Pharisees and those that, that came up with off-the-wall answers. Yeah, you're like your father the devil. See? I want conversation like that to be every day for you and I. Not just occasionally. I want in our hearts. I don't mean to be abrasive. I don't mean to be argumentative. But we need to tell it like it is. If you have an opportunity. Not to be harsh. Not to be harsh. I, I remember a pastor friend of mine. He was talking about his, one of his professors. Was uh, talk, teaching the men how to, to share the gospel. And sometimes when something is, is harsh to say. He says well fellas. And he was talking to young preachers. He says. You pack it in cotton, as gentle as you know how, but as straightforward and to the point in using the word of God, you tell it like it is. See? Not maybe pointing and sinner, you're going to hell, but there's ways of sharing. There's ways of letting your light shine. There are people that absolutely have to be. Either you change or you go to hell. Isn't it Jude 23 and 24? The two ways that we've we've shared, I wish Chuck Dennison is with the Lord now. He used to share it as chaplain over here at the hospital, he said. Friendship eval friendship evangelism and hell fire and brimstone. Either you change or you die and go to hell. Or you become their friend and you share. There's ways of sharing the good news without being harsh. Sometimes the Lord says, make sure they understand that they're right over the pit of hell, dangling, ready to pass into eternity, to a Christless eternity. God has to be in control, not, not man. God has to do the work. Uh, one more. Yeah, one more. Now let's turn to Psalm. Psalm 66, 18. I wasn't going to use all these scriptures. Psalm 18. No, Psalm 66, 18, I had it backwards. <laughs> Psalm 66, 18. Psalm 66, 18. 
So I'm saying, wow, I'm, I'm struggling now to see. So, <laughs> Psalm 66. Psalm 66. Verse 18. And I guess we'll probably have to close with that. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. See, we started off with the same one. And I looked at Brother Adolph and he's there. You see why it's so important that we read the word of God? So that we can share this with our loved ones. So that we can let our light shine. So that you and I, when the tempter comes, we can... What did Jesus uh, sh share with Satan when he came to tempt him? Remember, we just went through a probably two or three or three or four weeks of how the Lord was tempted by Satan there in, in I think it was Matthew 4, 1 through 10, uh, the, about the temptations that he lived... Share the word of God. It is written. He said, it is written. It is written. Listen to this right here, buster. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I need to start on my knees, humble myself with that contrite spirit, broken heart, saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank God. Thank God. Humility, weakness, repentance. We have to close. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for that uh, we can come to you as your children, asking, seeking, knocking. But Lord, let us understand that we can't be living in sin, expecting you to, to hear every little whim, every little uh, prayer that we have. Help us to understand, Lord, that we need to be prayed up, forgiven, walking in the spirit as a child of yours, letting our light shine. And Lord, if there's known sin in our hearts and lives, Reveal it to us and forgive us and help us, Lord. Help us this day, we ask. Pray for everything that will be said and done in the worship service. Pray for Brother Paul as he brings the message. Pray for the musicians, Lord, those that take part, whether they read the scripture or just whatever's done, Lord, uh, in your, your worship service. We've come, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. As, as a child of yours, we can say we know that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We know, Lord, that you hear us. We know that you're here with us this morning. We know in the depths of our heart that we're pleasing to you as we come to your house, Lord, that we don't forsake the assembling, that we do come to your house, Lord. And I just pray if there's a special need here this morning, Lord, that you'd please answer according to your perfect will. And Lord, if there's someone here that's not a Christian, they're not saved, they've rejected you. But Lord, may today be their day of salvation. May they hear, may they understand, may they be saved today. May there not be one person walk out of this sanctuary, walk out of this building this day without knowing you as personal Lord and Savior, without knowing beyond any shadow of a doubt if the breath of life was taken from us today that we would be in your presence. You tell us in your word, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So we thank you for that. Ask a special blessing on every family that's represented here this morning. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.